Welcome. This is a July 24th OpenZFS production user call. We have Steve, Stu, Andrew, Mark, Jan, and myself, Michael, so far. I will be posting a great amount of information about the upcoming user and developer summit coming up. We have landed two sponsors so far. Anyone in black there is likely to attend. Many of us are local on that short little list that's on the screen. And watch this space. Uh, turning back to a topic a week or two ago, uh, Antrenig and I were thinking, oh, that would be great if the FreeBSD installer asked for encryption for home uh, directories. And I see that in 14.1, it indeed has that support. But also, I discovered that it does not give you a chance to re-enter a passphrase if it's too short. So if anything, it could say, uh, enter an encryption key phrase, you know, minimum eight characters and there. And I also don't like slang language like min and goodbye, but that's just me. Heaven forbid we show it to the public. But uh, Mark, it sounds like you had a comment or observation on that or question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually, I've, I've been playing with um, package base as of late. Um, and you? Doing awesome, a... do tell. All right, so a couple of things. And do try um, to keep it on topic to ZFS, because I know we we kind of meander between, between topics, which is totally fair game. All right, um, but th this but is a- uh, your status, yes, that's a hot topic. Yeah, so I found that, that okay, I'm able, I could create the packages. I even renamed the packages uh, for my, my own little uh, distro name, essentially. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I find that it, uh, this is also, also for regular user authentication so far. Uh, so it, uh, it completely uh, destroys the uh, the password uh, file, um, at least the, the password settings file. So, and then uh, another thing with the current package base is that uh, it uh, doesn't pick up the, uh, it, well, the dependencies are not renamed properly. So if I decide to do Mark BSD uh, and all the packages get labeled Mark BSD dash whatever kernel uh, NAT whatever, uh, it, it it still assumes that it's going to be three BSD dash whatever. So I have to throw on a nice dash capital M in order to get the packages to install. Interesting. Um, how are you ultimately in? Installing those once you have them. Are you splatting them on top of an existing system or creating a new Cheroot? I'm I'm, I'm 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 spl I'm splatting on top of an, an existing system okay. at the moment. Um, that's your problem because package register is where it fails. Uh, during package register, it notices that the file in the location does not have the checksum, the SHA-256 hash from the packet, so it moves it out of the way under dot package safe. Uh, suffix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. And, and, uh, the and I way did, uh... you can do it on the ZFS system is you create a boot okay. environment. You uh, mount the boot environment as a J. Then you do the whole stuff you have to do to it in a J. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much where I've been going. Like I would have to create. For scripting purposes, if you know your system, you can do it like that. Um. And if you want to do it quick and dirty to an existing system, I found it most useful to install Git beforehand and mm -hmm. then just do a git init git at dot in your slash etc. And after what you can just run yeah, git yeah. restore. No, git de no. uh, you delete all the package save files and run a git restore. Yeah, no, I, I understand that the probably the assumption is that it is on a clean system. Uh, a clean drive. Um, but, uh, at the same yeah. time, uh, the the password uh, security levels are cranked up, so it ha it uh, requests that my uh, my password be at least three words as opposed to the regular mm -hmm. put in anything. So, so you can't change the prefix from FreeBSD to MarkBSD or something. Yeah, and I, yeah. So that is possible, but at the same time. Um, I just did it to a clean system uh, earlier today, actually, and tried to install the packages. And it's uh, it was saying that uh, it was so. I say I wanted to install something with a dependency. Originally, uh, 
the mark, you know, uh, a free, uh, free BSD dash, whatever, and that did not get uh, get replaced. So, I wonder if we could do some kind of smarter merge for groups and master password file and password file. The uh, busy yeah. the package register has a script which takes this file from the examples directory and then if there's an entry which does not exist, run it through PW. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, do the register keep the uh, keep the existing line for each user. Yeah. Some scripting with get end could probably get you where. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Like I've been, I, I, thankfully everything's been pretty relatively simple to uh, to get it going. So like I create my user, uh, like initially when the when installing the the original system, and then when I do the packages, uh, and, I, and afterwards I just use PW user add, and uh, everything's kind of cool again. Uh, I have to redo the password. I have to go in and ch change the password uh, settings back to what they were originally, or work with it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, let's geek out on that a little later. Um, Another yes, yes. We hit some common uh, trip up would be PUM configuration files, mm -hmm. which are also overwritten. I uh, importantly, we really from the one of the very common ones, which could oh. lock you out, is your SSHD configuration. Ooh, yuck. So, uh, Greg, any topics? To default. Let's geek out on that later because I do want to geek out on that, but let's. Uh, Get anything and everything open ZFS out of the way. That said, uh, Greg, any topics or follow ups to your awesome information on SNMP and friends and uh, NFS performance and other goodies? Okay. And while you either unmute or think of topics, uh, oh, you're unmuted. Welcome, Greg. There. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. No, no, no topic worries. today. Okay. Uh, yep. That said, while I have all of you and Mark, you're new to this discussion, and uh, the, 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 Steve, you might be able to join. It sounds like, and Andrew, you might join. Let's just circle back to topics at the event. Uh, they've been narrowing over the weeks and months, etc. But uh, the better we all agree on what we want to enjoy as. Uh, attendees, the better we can reach out to the outside world and deliver on that. So yeah, sorry to circle back, but um, I know with folks like Daniel and uh, Rod talking network WAN performance, I suspect that LAN and WAN replication, uh, what performance and reliability might be a valid topic. Uh, show of hands, but you don't have to just uh, click a little button. I'd rather just hear people like grunt in favor, or if you're in the middle of something, yeah, use a little hand. Uh, performance and reliability. Any grunts in favor, or shall I scratch that? <laughs> okay, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> uh, let me fix that. Uh, I don't have a good. Morning. What was that, Jan? Oh, you've got a thumbs up. Excellent. Uh, mechanical, I don't have a good term, but mechanical metrics and management, that is getting information out in a structured way, out of ZFS in a structured way, and back into it, be it from management through your quickly banged out interface that is using your language of choice and has amazingly easy to use built-in hooks so that you aren't reinventing the wheel. Um, is that a topic that uh, we would, we think we could add some meat to identify needs. And dare I say, in the big picture, I'd love to see a elegant handoff to the developer if two days after the user days and say, hey, here are the priorities we have. Here are the facts. Here's what exists here. What Here's what doesn't exist. Let's rock. It's certainly something I'm interested in. Uh, that, that's a plus one right there. Plus, um, plus three. Go ahead. What was that? Second plus person? three. Plus three. Excellent. Okay. Um, and uh, granted, we've covered these to various extents, but I really want to narrow it down and safely say, hey, you are guaranteed to get some really up to date media content on boom, these three topics. So let's see. A third might be obviously there is like large array performance. Um, the one challenge there is both 
scaling up, I cannot bring a few petabytes to the table, but there might be sponsors who can. Also, there was in previous calls mentions of, well, some tests will have meaningful results after a month or two or three. And yes, we have a few months to technically play with, but um, uh, how could we narrow down that topic where we can be pragmatic in, with some on-site hardware, we can uh, we can bring our tips and tricks and scripts to the table and do a show and tell. Uh, what um, first come first serve? Who is uh, interested in some variation on that theme? Go ahead, Jan. Maybe we need an artificial aging treatment for pools. Does anyone know such a thing exists? Um, Torture test to degrade the pool layout um, to realistic but painful uh, usage. Ah, uh, so I suspect you... you could very quickly create some uh, uh, some fragmentation for what it's worth. And uh, Matt Aaron's yeah. pointed out that if you were to just create this, create, 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 delete, delete every other file, you'd instantly have air quotes, 50% fragmentation, despite the fact that you probably have pretty big swaths of clear space. So uh, I like that notion that's, that's, that's similar to the beehive notion of accelerating qualifier. time. So go ahead, Jan, sorry to speak over you. That's why I added the realistic qualifier, not <laughs> pathological. <laughs> Thank you not... uh, to realistically. Gang, has anyone come up with ways to do that or needs to do that without a way and is looking for a way. So a torture test, not a reproducer for, for a pathological case. Right, uh, right topic. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned the user space list and such. Actually, uh, this has come up a few times as user space ZFS in all its forms. Uh, When you double it to like plan 18 from plan nine user space, uh, bump, rim shot. Uh, formed. Uh, so, and no, but uh, we'll get to your topic, Jan, in a second. But uh, that is something I've been dabbling in through, for example, on FreeBSD, the make FS, make image, and you can create a valid ish pool using. Uh, unprivileged uh, user command line syntax, which is kind of cool. So, uh, and I know Daniel's been looking at the notion of a nice, safe, isolated virtual machine, possibly with user space ZFS to handle the ingestion of a possibly or highly untrustworthy uh, send stream. Uh, is there anyone present who has some thoughts on user space ZFS? No, I don't want to find that. So uh, I'll put a big old question mark next to that. Um, all I heard back on large array performance is the notion of uh, realistic aging in a Petri dish laboratory environment. Um, show of hands or grunts, any DRAID users and that uh, kind of angle on it. And I know we've had some great, uh, the, had some great discussions of arc management, L2 arc management and warming. And for example, can you very quickly warm an L2 arc realistically by reading in a bunch of data? I don't know, just race over your data, your set of data to populate that arc, uh, arc management. I have a Jeep JBot as D-RAID who said that. Jan, how many drives are you operating in D-RAID and what have you learned from it? What I've learned from it that the sequential throughput is fine, um, but you really, really want uh, either a special allocation class for metadata on Flash or you want uh, at least a, a ZFS Journal, you don't want a pure spinning Rust D-rate tool because it 
throughput has fall, back operation is fine, but latency is really annoying. Actually, and that is a excellent variation on this theme of special allocation classes, which have come up in various ways. And the fact that you can drop certain size data into that flash device in addition to metadata is... Uh, the important part is exciting. you can get the metadata in there, like directory listings. Yes. So they're not stuck behind a 20 deep week queue on a D-rate. Special allocations, no special allocation classes uh, in the wild. And then of course, uh, as I just bang out a working list that we will refine over the coming weeks, uh, would l things like Lua scripting go in there? I'll put Lua up here. Uh, channel programs came up and it was like, why can't we do this, this, and this? And so that's a running discussion. Uh, channel. Okay. Am I crazy? Is that a, a reasonable working list of things that those present would want to show up and hear more about and have a few things to contribute to or more? And yes, this is transparent public event planning because, hey, events are for you, not me. Well, I think that's a good start. Thank you. So uh, this document is wide open. Please comment as you see fit. Add your ideas as they pop up on the way commuting home. And I and this is not a naive list. I've been collecting these this input from all of you for quite some time. And I think let's just focus in on it, hammer it home, decide how much of that's like round table, how much of that's a presentation. Um, if you have a topic like, hey, here's how I fix the problem we've been discussing, that would be a, you know, a perfectly legitimate one-to-many talk compared to, say, a roundtable discussion. So I don't well, want to ruthlessly part, structure it, but I do want to have you know, that balance. Go ahead, Stu. Yeah, I mean, part part of it in my mind is there are three goals in the user side of it. Is One, we get to talk amongst each other and share our battle scars. The stuff, hey, here's how we can be more efficient with how it sits now. And then the third is feeding the development development team two day or in the following days to say, hey, this is actually what would make our lives a hell of a lot easier. And if it's structured in those three paths or whatever you want to call them, whatever um love it. Beautiful. Seminar type thing. And it's like, okay, you I want to be on this path for sharing more stories and go, oh, crap, I remember this, you know. And that sequence is actually quite good for the sort of programming of it. Um, I, I want to, I'd love to see refinement over the, the first, you know, the, let's just say the first three days with the third day being the sort of handoff to developers. So yeah, I very much like that. Um, and Highly likely we will do a social event the Friday evening before because people will be rolling into town from various places. So thank you very, very much for that. I had to do that mental exercise and get the encouragement of you and the real world input of you. Anything else on that topic before we move on to finer grain things? And yes, I will focus quite heavily on streaming and possibly even not quite one of those remote robot things that goes around and you can drive it from far away, but at least maybe a, a camera in the corner with a display and like, hey, people can <laughs> be a part in some way. Okay. Uh, Jan, um, I will from go that with point of you. You've got some, yes. Because you will probably uh, be remote. At Jan. Chaos Communication accurate? Club events, yes. it's common that there's a designated repeater function so that you have the chat to uh, talk rich as a human who can there's a schedule that for every talk there's someone or for every big enough session there's someone it can just be a right board where you sign your name and then a convention how to that so that someone can set up there, for example, IRC client 
highlight everything starting with Q colon. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So that uh, it's I... easy for someone to collect that up, filter it out, so they're not obligated to forward everything if there's too much. It would be nice if they just provide back pressure, like that's too much, uh, and if they have the mental capacity for it and bandwidth, and so on, it would be even better that they're able to pick your most important question. Mm -hmm. But uh, just that you, otherwise it's kind of frustrating if there's a chat, but it's detached from the actual uh, event. Okay, I will. I will obviously be doing some amount of moderating, and I do see how a remote participation mod moderator would be very helpful. And speaking in BSD CAN teams, even just having someone verifying that the streams are consumable from far away over mechanical yep. devices is really helpful. <laughs> uh, communication checker. club events, we uh, video uh, question center prefers those little uh, Chinese golden winky cats, which just flip one arm up and down all the time. <laughs> yes, because that way you visual. can notice if the because one of the most insidious way you can lose a stream is you lose a stream of an empty stage and think, oh, the event hasn't started. Ah, because the stream, yes. stream fr freezes instead of dropping out. And then you have a cool. half an hour of no movement. Yep. Okay. That said, uh, let's talk D raid. Let's kind of prime our very collective pumps on that one. So replacing a disk doesn't imply a scrub of the resilver disk. But it does slow down the D-RAID during the rebuild. Interesting. So is it not it a tradition? Well, it does or it doesn't? It, it almost doesn't hurt the remaining drives. Okay. What D-RAID does is that it's a lot closer to traditional parity RAID than RAID Z. Interesting. So uh, the, all the drives are the same size. So uh, you no longer have rebel size drives. And you can think of it as having dozens of partitions and then read these among those rotate it around so that means hmm. that your spare capacity is similar to uh, an other's virtual partition on those parity rates so your spare capacity is striped over all disks at different offsets yep okay which means uh or which means that the during rebuild, the read IOPS come from every disk. Ah. So every ah. disk has something to contribute. And then you write the rebuilt disk sequentially. Hmm. Okay. So you do it so you don't do only you don't just restore the unlocated objects, you do a dumb sequential restore, mm -hmm. which is important because on a big enough pool. It's normal that during you will basically have almost always uh, one or two damaged disks in a multi-hundred disk pool. Okay. Um, so it has to work, and rebirths are just part of your everyday operations, not short of disaster recovery. Okay, can't be resized, uh, as in there is no add a VDEV or. Add you can add VDEF identical. But the one? D rate is a giant. Yeah. So you don't use a D rate unless you have more than thirty or forty disks. And then you have so, to add another forty. Yes. Okay. Now what about you add by J bot placement? You add whole J bots. Okay. Got it. Yep. So if you thought of adding a full rate Z was bad, this is worse. Goodness. Okay. Uh. Welcome, Rick. Do you have any topics? And is this your first call? Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. I apologize for that. You're welcome to be a fly on the wall. Go ahead. I'll just be a fly on the wall. Thank you. Yes, this is my first time. Do you want to do an intro or just be a fly on the wall? I'll, I'll be a fly on the wall today. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. No worries. And uh, there, uh, we did discuss some of about the uh, upcoming user and developer event i will drop a link in the chat for at least the high level wiki page and i will have a whole bunch more news shortly on that so moving on uh ba, 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 ba. Ah, 
Jan, you have another topic. Uh, user space DFS list get cache with so, um, uh, yeah, tear through we've that one seen if you with will. replication scripts yes. running DFS list uh, dash R and so on can already be covered, but it's slow. But especially if you really want to support arbitrary user properties, which can contain both tabs, spaces, new lines, and so on, up to the maximum characters. Things so you don't have any safe uh, separators for ZFS list, so that means you have to run lots of ZFS gets, and that gets slow just running the command that often. And and you still have, for some properties have to do a bunch of stuff to read them out. And the idea was that at least on FreeBSD you can get the not a kernel notification via uh, dev CTL. So something that dev D can dispatch on or on FreeBSD 13.2 and newer, you can use the uh, Netlink generic stuff for that. So that you use loaded Netlink generic module to turn dev CTL messages into Netlink messages and then you can consume the stream of, hey, the kernel knows that this property has changed, and then you can read in the value and maintain an almost okay. up-to-date cache of that. Okay, so you'd capture the events and cache them you for the consume user. Consume the change yep. event and then update your cache. And then you could have a cache which tells you, as of this wall time or up time, whatever, yep. this was the cache content. And then a script could say, I want this data as of this. And if the request time is below the cache time, then mm. you don't have to revalidate the cache. Okay. So if you had one afternoon and uh, an urgent need for a sloppy prototype, what language would you turn to? Would you attempt to use Lua and uh, channel programs? Or he and uh, libzfs core. Okay, so what was the first part and libzfs core? C. C, okay. Uh, Just because you have to interface with libzfs or libzfs yeah. core, hopefully. Cool. Uh, any observations, questions, requests relating to something uh, like lib that? ZFS core, not libc. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm typing. I'm, I'm multitasking. Sorry. Here you go. Easy on the old man. Uh, BTL4. Okay. Uh, has anyone observed that that metadata caching is slow? Daniel definitely hit that when writing Zelta, finding that some operations like listing data set and or, if you're really naughty yeah, about UIDs it you are could, super fast but some are super slow go ahead and if you're really naughty about it you could have a wrapper executable in your search path which uh, handles only zfs list and get and forwards everything else to the real zfs command hmm. cool so uh would you store have, that in sqlite or something or something. Uh, oh, something. SQLite would make sense. Uh, just the B tree in Libc would work, but yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have thoughts on that? Sure. And if the theme is make it go faster, I think we will always generally agree. Yes, if you have an opportunity to make it go faster, go ahead and make it go faster. <laughs> Heck, you could even, won't stop oh, you. Uh, go if ahead. you want to make it really fast, you could uh, just use a uh, memory segment and the every based red black tree. Hmm. Red black tree, what'd you call it? Re uh, in FreeBSD Libc, yeah. we have an array based um, um, red black tree. Um, the main page of this. Okay. I might be typing that completely wrong. My apologies. Uh, ARB3, of course. Okay. And uh, the idea is that you can, because you're using array indices instead of pointers oh, for the okay. tree mm -hmm. nodes, uh, you can have them in shared memory without requiring a static 
virtual address for it. So that, for example, you can send a red black tree between user space and kernel space. Cool. That said, I think we have, barring any other topics, a segue into revisiting uh, Rick's observation on package base in FreeBSD, sorry if it's specific to that, and uh, PAM ZFS key modules. Jan, was that also you following up on Rick? I think that was your question, looking back. So Jan, was that you? Okay, Rick, you were diving into your discoveries on package base. I'm I put a primitive hook to it in Occam BSD and hope to take that further. Uh, let's geek on out on that if appropriate, and I will never be offended if someone drops off the call because that's not their cup of tea or they need to run to something. So, Rick and Jan, get, are you able to discuss that further? Sorry to have cut you off earlier. Discuss um, package base. Package base, and was this a segue from that, the PAM ZFS key? Or no, that's totally unrelated? Uh, orthogonal to that. That's just... Uh -huh. uh, a question um, if anyone has tried to use uh, not SS, right, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry um has you tried to use the pam module to authenticate users against the home directory is encryption key so that you you're allowed to ssh in via password if you can or log in via xdm or whatever if you can dfs uh, load key uh, for your home data set Interesting. Yeah. So that's an existing thing. Is that OS specific or is that ZFS specific? Oh, I don't know if any other operating system has a PAM module for it. That's uh, FreeBSD has one. Okay. Cool. Um. So then, you it would allow you doesn't work with it. So, what exactly can the user achieve with that authentication mechanism? That your home directory, your home data sets encryption key is also your login password. Cool. <clears throat> it avoids the duplication that those two are out of sync. And the question is, do, has anyone tried to actually use the SSH and Got it. does it work if you also have public key of so that you can use, combine public key of with challenge response of to establish a PAM session? And that's deep down the rabbit hole. Yeah, um, and I it's something that should that. work, but you, someone has to test it and confirm it before I believe it. And are you hinting at two FA here or MFA? So I like where that's headed, and it sounds like folks are leveraging tools within Reach, which is the Unix way. Thank you very much. So when I said Rick, I meant Mark. Uh, Mark, do you want to? elaborate on uh, package base and what you've discovered and how it steps on the various parts of your running system, be it, be it PAM, PAM authentication bits, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I have uh, I, I've, uh, built the packages, gave them custom names. Mm. Uh, yeah, I have gone through uh, and uh, using locate and a couple little scripts, uh, renamed, uh, replaced all the package save files. Um, although I did not save the, uh, the PAM pass password file. Uh, so I had, I had to fix that manually. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure um, what else I have yet. To... file should be preserved under a dot package safe suffix. It should never overwrite that in place. Well, without it, saving it... the old file. Yeah, it well, there was no package save for it. Hmm. Uh, so I like I am going through, relaying my experience to, through the past rough, roughly so, week. So is the PAM uh, or etc. Pass CD? Uh, it's the uh, hold on, it, it's like the password file. You know, actually, that gets uh, that gets that's, that gets reset as well. Uh, but yeah, it's the it's one it's one with all the settings uh, for the password string. So like, 
you see could it be that that's not saved um, as a config file uh, it might be uh in the package yeah, that the package uh, annotates it incorrectly not as a config file but just as a normal file and then the freeware merge logic would not trigger i think it should but it should still do uh the saving of conflicting files and moving them out of the way before installing. Yeah, no. So it's uh, etc pam etc pam d password is the one that did not have a package saved with it. Considering I'm on a fresh, fresh yeah. So yeah. So considering I'm looking at a freshly done system, and there's no package saved with it. Was well, that file <laughs> empty? No, it wasn't empty. Uh, it was the what was initially installed from the FreeBSD installer. Huh. Granted, I should also mention it's the latest 15 snapshot. Uh, thank you for the dot package save. I haven't worked with it that close. That said, two points. Uh, one, uh, I encourage you to experiment with perhaps... Uh, ZFS snapshots at every step and using ZFS diff to see what got mangled along the way. And you may have to change your, as I recall, compression setting to get higher granularity on that. Does that ring a bell? But uh, ZFS is your friend for such things when you're doing waves of changes. And you can roll back, believe it or not, which is awesome. No, oh, yeah, no, I've been I've been using snapshots uh, for Great. some things. Uh, like this is a lot of this is VMs or systems that I'm uh, okay. that are disposable essentially. Have you indeed tried ZFS diff? No, I haven't tried that uh, with. Give this. it a go. It may be surprised when that you know, if you set directory before and after. Well, there's your source of truth. It it's either there mm -hmm. or it's not. Just saying. All right. Um, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So how have and so that RPM kind of big upgrades uh, Z pool uh, checkpoints are also a great idea. Uh, true. So Z pool uh, checkpoint is a full wide snapshot. Yep. You can have only one of them. It's basically your fail safe for operating system upgrades or even ZFS pool uh, upgrades. Correct. Oh, it'll even yeah. survive an upgrade, right? Uh, a pool yes. secret flag upgrade. No, I forgot about that. Nice. Uh, the downside is that right it exists, no every write allocates new space and no uh, old space can be freed up because right, but... that's how it's implemented. Yeah, so, uh, right. Don't keep them around long term. Okay. But yeah, that... the uh correct. Real correction on your on your slides that Please. it's P PKG save. PK. Oh, is it? Okay, cool. Uh, I saw something in chat. Oh, I, I mistyped it. Yeah, I'm I'm updating badly. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and this doc is wide open. You're welcome to fix in on the fly. Some people are aggressive about that. Some don't touch it, which is totally fine. So that said, um, how have our friends in Red Hat and Debian and other lands been addressing these issues for decades? Uh, I mean, when it comes to uh, upgrades of system that may have uh, obviously configured users, passwords, you name it. Uh, yeah, I, I, why do I we know, feel like, like we're I, reinventing this? <laughs> we shouldn't. Yeah, be. yeah, yeah. Because I've I've made it some RPMs in the past, and there are scripts like snippets of code that you can put into the uh, into the RPM file creation yeah. file, and uh, so. Yeah, that's one way. Although there are uh, there's other things. It's, essentially, they have mechanisms to check mm -hmm. uh, either full full blown bash script or shell script or whatever, um, or some other uh, uh, built in uh, memnotic that that will check something. Yeah, De Debian is pre and post validations. Yes. Yeah. And those can be full scripts or programs. And there's uh, they also got. Uh, well, they got they have like, granted it's been a while, um, but they have like uh, stuff that you can execute at every stage, like yeah, and even uh, like an upgrade mode, uh, like check for for upgrade or whatever. Now is oh. that the 
that is now is that how they're doing it today i'm not 100 percent sure because i'm sure a lot of things have changed since i last looked at it and is it the best way maybe not fortunately we have users within reach who like Stu, who can chime in that's why it takes a village so so freebsd packages can have be or post install upgrade uninstall shell uh, or previously Lua scripts, but mm -hmm. the scripts are free from, so the package author is responsible for making sure it's safe and re reliable in all circumstances. So you have to yeah. be really defensive mm -hmm. if you in your shell scripting if you want to do anything non-trivial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I know I've, uh, I've had a few packages where they said, oh, this file already exists. You might want to double check it or there's a diff or whatever. So I've had exceptions. But there's also mm -hmm. an uh, even more powerful, more structured interface, and that's the triggers where basically you place a, a trigger in a vulnerable directory. It has to be a um, UCL file which contains I think a Lua script and that script then is annotated with globs and anytime one of the one of the files changed by the package matches a glob this uh, trigger is executed so that way even uh, one package can install this trigger and another package installs in some directory and the trigger gets run so this allows loose coupling. For example, if you install a font, your XORG font index is recompiled. Huh. Um, or stuff ahead. Um, what relationship would you say there might be to um, newer, more experimental versions of ZFS with packages. I know Linux, by definition, is reliant on packages to have any ZFS, but over in FreeBSD land, has anyone, I guess, custom built a newer ZFS on a, a, a stable system as an experiment or a strategy? As long as you don't... Sorry. I've, I've tried a couple of times and failed to my level of professionalism. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, again, to be fair, I haven't spent days on it. I've spent, oh, let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. I like that. Okay. Uh, Stu dabbled with it. <laughs> so, yes, John. Um, in the past, uh, just so that I don't get a nasty backup right before FreeBSD moved from its own ZFS version to OpenZFS, I yeah. tried it and it worked. But here, the rule which I observed is that don't enable new feature flags, and you should be able to go back. And then, if it doesn't work, you can go to back to the old version. Correct. If you ever run the pull upgrade. Don't that unless you uh, unless you really know that you never want to go back to an older mm. ZFS version because potentially you can't even import it for reading, mm. depending this on which feature you enable. Cool. Looking oh, at you data set encryption. Oh, repeat that on data set encryption. Sorry, I spoke over you. Um during the import of ZFS and data set encryption, it was possible to uh, upgrade a pool to support even your root pool and then use ZFS data set encryption before the loader bits were in place. So you installed your lab machine, you turned on data set encryption, everything worked, and then you rebooted and the loader would say no pool found. Yep. Because yep, yep. the loader was unable to read a pool because it didn't know to ignore the encrypted data sets. But All it right. had a, yeah. It was only in FreeBSD current. It never even hit a release candidate like that. 
Okay, so that said, um, what might an encryption topic look like at an, a user event? Um, who, do people still have questions, hesitation, or otherwise before diving in? And I guess, what's it look like at scale? And I know a previous Dev Summit had a a key management talk that may have been interrupted by travel or something, so that never quite happened. But what uh, show of grunts who's who's using encryption actively? I will gr grunt first. I'm I've been using it on a Mac. Um, grunt, 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 um, grunt. Okay, so can you describe your use cases? Uh, summit. Encryption. What are your use cases, and what are your either fears or challenges or such? And I say fears insofar as well, encryption is well terrifying, and get it wrong, you lose access to your data, you ransomware yourself with no ransom to pay. Um, what have your use cases been so far? Use cases, and I'm glad you brought that up, Jan. Well, use cases, data transfers uh, between FreeBSD and Linux machines for tens of terabytes where you really don't want to put it on X, F, even, uh, sorry, X, uh, at 32 or X thread are designed mm -hmm. to handle that number of files and a mix of tons of small files and lots of very large files. And um, that's not good. So the alternative would have been to just write raw tar archives to disks, hmm. <laughs> just tar to a partition or even a raw disk uh, and then do it like that. And yeah, CFS is a lot nicer. <laughs> Stu, as a printer on that topic, what are your, your use cases? We actually use it for um, protection code at rest. Source code or deployed video data code. or something else entirely? Deployed code. So our ops, whatever directory is actually a ZFS encrypted pool that will not load unless the license key exists. So it's a protection. It's a very cheap, easy way to do that. Mm -hmm. And by license code, you mean a appliance paid user facing license that they they yes. enable a feature with cool okay and based on the features enabled that tells you what what data sets are allowed to be mounted up so we have interesting oh okay uh yeah i like that um oops uh uh, different data sets for features and then structured and uh, oh uh, <laughs> uh keep keep thinking about what a monologue on that would look like because that's kind of cool uh different data sets i i thought it was uh represent paid features so along similar lines you know with all this talk of like administrative password manager um, stuff i just picture sending an encrypted you know set to specific machines and specific users have access and there you go you get all that functionality like free of charge but yes jan you had an um yeah you could even go one further and just put something like gpg uh, dash d in your uh, pipe so that you have require some of your one from your operations team to lock up a machine and anyone that is able if they are part of the addressed set of public keys to uh, mount that so that you get rid of a limitation of having only one or two key slots uh, for example with jelly hmm. oh okay interesting uh uh history password storage and then not Get really around. distributed, but uh, well, sharded or replicated. Jelly key slot limitations, maybe? Gally yeah, Jelly has slot. only two key slots per uh, provider. 
Thank you. You can script around that the same way, by the way. Sure. Okay. Uh, GPG D does what mechanically? Um, you just GPG decrypt uh, or okay. any other uh, kind of decryption tool with public key crypto and the ability to address multiple recipients. Okay. Def uh, definitely above the ZFS level, but uh, for multiple recipients. Uh, comment from Mark. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, oh, maybe I hit edit. No worries. I will tight, tighten up on all the event public facing stuff shortly. So uh, thank you for your patience, Mark, for multiple. Uh, other use cases of encryption that are not simply a bunch of data is encrypted, but actual administrative uses. Stu, I love that. Uh, users. Oh, Eventbrite. Yeah, that's from last year. That hasn't even been touched. So yes, Eventbrite ASAP. I'll put that as like top of the list uh, as time is roaring by. So, so um, yes, we're stumbling into a lot of uh, troubles with BitLocker. So I, I like it may come up for me in the short term just as a way to avoid BitLocker at any cost, um, but still satisfy corporate uh, IT. Have you dipped your toe into OpenCFS on Windows? Uh, not yet. Um, not yet. It, it's it's a thought. There's a few guys that that may be looking into it next week. Okay. Yep. Um. Uh, I learned how to uh, process Windows crash dumps, and that is on the wiki. <laughs> Because, well, that was kind of important, but I think they've made great progress and Jorgen has been super responsive. So I say go in head first. Uh, I can answer some questions. Um, I will say that is the final frontier, ZFS on Windows. And like, gee, you mean your Exchange server isn't on ZFS or something like it? And no, REFS is not quite the thing. So um, uh, I, I will just, Throw it out there. Let's say, you know, Windows, the final frontier uh, on Windows. And I totally see how that corporate checkbox ne needs to be checked. But vendors who blow out your keys with BIOS updates are not always your friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> UHP so, off. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Uh, the uh, question uh, Windows side, since I haven't played with it for a year or so. Yeah. Is it physical device only, or does the iSCSI side of it work? Uh, it shouldn't care. Yep. Uh, let's, that's, uh, hold on. Uh, when it comes to questions, that's a question. Uh, does I? I'm, I'm willing to try. I just, I haven't because the last time I tried Windows, it just barked. So. Oh, did it? Interesting. Okay. Uh, that's a fantastic, yeah. tangible question. Thank you very much. Yeah. On Windows 2022. Uh, the initiator, yes. And to its credit, I will say, as a complete Unix weenie, that Windows has had amazing iSCSI and F fiber channel support because their network protocols were so terrible. So they have a really long, strong history with block storage over the network. And I've seen people reboot their like true nas that is the backing like boot storage to a windows server and windows server just patiently waits and caches stuff and is like oh yeah i'm back hey how you doing so yeah that's actually that is a fascinating one i like it um uh and just from the hip what does zfs encryption key management mean to each of you like uh Post-it notes, uh, dedicated uh, USB drives that come online for just keys and go away, perhaps either virtual or real. Uh, where does a YubiKey, like this YubiKey 5NFC in my hand, fit in the mix? And can I use that with ZFS this afternoon? Uh, what does... You know, 
We have, we have an escrow. That's system. the keyboard to reveal a post it note underneath. That that's a pretty popular one. It's not a good one, but it's a popular one. Uh, Stu, you said a tool or something. We, we have an escrow system to maintain those type of keys on behalf of our customers. Cool. Okay. Is that so, a service from a third party or a mechanism or a project you downloaded? It's one of ours. It's an internal build system. Oh, cool. Love it. Um, yeah, I know if you for, check the forums, HP sure doesn't have any <laughs> service for users. And they're like, oh, wait, you didn't know you had BitLocker running and oh, our update blew out your BIOS saving as those and oh, you lost all your data. That's so sad. <sighs> so these yeah, are a lot of people topic. are finding out they didn't have anything. Yep. And it doesn't prompt on installation, or if you receive a new shipped PC that has BitLocker enabled, it doesn't aggressively prompt saying, yo, <laughs> it'll prompt you hourly to use like their OneDrive services, but they sure don't prompt you to back up your encryption key. And to their credit, they let you print things out and do other like, you know, analog methods of saving off a key. That's cool, but if you don't use it, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. And rant. <laughs> And I'm a Mac and Unix user, and I, I, I still rant about these things because I have to face it, and occasionally I get those phone calls, and I don't like those phone calls. So, anyway, I will have uh, things like uh, Eventbrite and Friends up shortly. I thank you for all of this. I welcome any remaining questions, comments, you name it, or we call it good and continue with our days. Uh, Jan, yeah, do you just, want the honor? Oh, go ahead, Andrew. I was just, yeah, send out the Eventbrite stuff. Okay. Yes. Uh, sort in a keyboard macro key. Oh, blinking keyboards. Yes. You could do uh, Morris code blinky keyboard key decryption. No. Uh, okay. Uh, no, Eventbrite the, ASAP. I've just seen someone store his, half of his disk encryption password on a gaming system uh, in the keyboard as a macro key. Okay. Well, uh, Andrew, do you want the owners? Well, I can subscribe. Thank you.